Now we had some laughs a little bit yesterday, right? So now it's serious time, okay? No more laughs for a while. Remember how I told you yesterday and how the judge told you this morning? You all are the most important people in this courtroom right now. Because Mr. Mickelson, Mr. Drawl, me, Mr. Woods, we can all make our arguments for our clients. But at the end of the day, it's going to be you who decide this man's fate. Okay? It's not even the judge. Okay? The judge will tell you what the law is, but it's up to you to weigh the evidence. You have to decide who's credible and who's not credible. And remember how I told you yesterday, people lie all the time. You all agreed about people lying. Well, you're going to find out that Mr. Valenzuela is a serial liar when he comes up here. Mr. Valenzuela would tell you that it's raining today if it would save his skin. Okay? And you'll find out about how many lies Mr. Valenzuela told during the course of the investigation of this offense. Okay? It's up to you. You have an awesome responsibility. And I don't mean the word as in its colloquial loose uh, use. It's actually awesome. Inspiring awe. It's one of the things that sets us apart from a lot of other countries. It's because we trust you. Just people from all walks of life, we trust you to make the right decisions. We trust that you are reasonable people. We trust that you are capable of weighing the evidence and making a determination as to whether or not there is a reasonable doubt. Okay? As I mentioned, the state has to prove three things. They have to prove the ugly man Cossacks is a criminal street gang under the law. They have to prove beyond a reasonable doubt then Mr. Tibbetts meets the legal definition of member of a criminal street gang under the law. And you have, they have to prove that Mr. Tibbetts intentionally or knowingly participated in the shooting of Brandon Edwards, who's the decedent in this matter. I'm going to do my best to to convince you that the state can't meet their burden. But in the end, we all trust you. We picked you, right? We all, all four of us, picked you. Because we believe that out of the 90 people who are here, you all, you 12, 13, were the best suited to make an impartial decision about this case based on the evidence presented to you. So here's what I want you to keep in mind for the next few days, because they get to go first. They get to put on all of their evidence first, okay? Now we get to what's called cross-examine their witnesses, but they get to put on their case first. And you might be tempted at the end of their presentation to say, well, yeah, he's guilty, like, done. Okay, but then we get to put on our case. So you need to keep an open mind. You need to wait to make a decision until all the evidence is put in. And then all four of us, five of us, put it in your hands. And you'll go in and you'll make a decision. I trust that you're going to do the right thing. <coughs> find Mr. Tibbetts not guilty of this offense. Just as right at this moment, Mr. Tibbetts is not guilty. Remember we talked about that yesterday? Talked about the presumption of innocence, fancy legal term, but it's fundamental to the American justice system. 
Mr. Tibbetts exercising his constitutional right to go to trial because he doesn't want to roll over and be steamrolled in this case. Okay? I urge you to keep an open mind until we're all done. And at the end of this, the state will talk to you again, then I get one last chance to talk to you, and the state gets to talk to you again. And then the judge will read you the law. Okay? It's an awesome responsibility we all have to uphold the law. I put my trust in you. Thank you.